guys welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new video so it's been a little while since my last video but seeing as we were trying to get a different paneling style in the spare bedroom i thought i would do a how-to guide for you so panelling at the moment is such a huge trend, it is everywhere, it's in magazines, it's on adverts, it's in everyone's Instagram accounts, um, I'm here for it, I absolutely love it and we have it in the main bedroom as well which is a different style of panelling, I think this one looks a little more elegant and I'm really loving how this came out, so hopefully my video helps, um, I've done it from start to finish so you can keep up with me and do it at the same time if you like, um, but yeah, can't wait to show you how we did this behind me. So I've cleared the room as much as I can and we've taken the bed down just to give us some more space to get access to the wall. So this is where the panelling will be. Okay, so the first thing you will want to do is just make sure that your wall is as flat and perfect as possible because you're going to see a lot of this with this type of panel in. Uh, we had all the walls plastered when we moved in um, and they've been painted white as well, which is fabulous for us because we don't really have to do much. We know it's all nice and flat. But if you do have any like lumps and bumps, just give it a sand back um, just to get rid of any imperfections. There's a couple of marks on the wall, but don't worry about those. I'll give them a little paint. And if you have any like holes in the wall or anything like that, just use a bit of filler and then sign that back. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out on the wall exactly where the um, bead and go data rail is going to go. I've done a little drawing, just because I find it easier this way. So the overall um, width of the wall is 323 centimetres, the height is 230. I'm leaving a 15 centimetre gap in between each one. I've decided that three is going to look best. Um, this is totally um, personal preference you can go with more narrow ones you can go different sizes it's completely up to you so for this next step you just need something long and straight that you can use as a ruler i'm just using a spirit level you need your measuring tape and a pencil <laughs> So we've now done all the markings on the wall and um, it's very faint, let me try and get a closer, we've had to put the light on because it's quite hard to see but, oh, can I really see if it goes? So we've just done all the markings and measurements on the wall, the next step is to start cutting and measuring our wood pieces, which we're going to do now. So we're just getting ready to cut our pieces. We've got our mitre block, which cuts at a 45 degree angle, as you can see there, which is what you'll need for the edges. And we're just gonna screw this into these ladders, just so it doesn't move. So just to show you what we're doing next, I've just wrote down all of the pieces that we need to do the wall paneling. I've got a little friend now as well, Mimi. So this is the data rail. I'm just marking out the length we need on each, we're just cutting that in a straight line across and then after we've cut all of our pieces we'll then do our 45 degree angle. So the mitre block also cuts straights, you can saw straight through here, which gives you the perfect straight line. So just to show you what we've done next, we've just laid it out on the floor in the position that it will go on the wall and then I've just marked just a little line of which bits we're cutting off each corner just to know where we're cutting and now we're going to do the 45 degree angle on all the ends mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So our angles are all now cut and all the pieces, like so. 
now is the time to get them stuck on the wall so we've got a little bit of pink grip left which we're going to use we've also got some um, new no more nails as well but you can use anything similar to this and you'll just need the gun obviously as well so the first piece we're going to secure is going to be this one which goes across the whole wall I doubt you need that much I reckon but This is the biggest piece we've got, so this is going to take the most. So our first section is now up. There's a few little gaps and bits which I'm going to fill in afterwards. But it's looking pretty good for the first one. Two more sets to go. So just to show you what we're doing, we're just lying it down on the floor first so we know where the pieces are going and then one by one putting the pink stuff on. Um, We've also got these, which is grip fill. Malcolm's put a sticker on it. Yeah. But yeah, on oh, second. Yeah, that we've got grip fill as well. So anything like that will be fine. Um, put a bit of that on it, and then just put pressure on the wall and stick it to the wall. <laughs> Here we are, they are all stuck on the wall. Because it's a 1930s house, the wall is a little bit out, so we have some gaps. Um, as you can see like at the bottom there. So I'm going to go over the whole thing once this is set, so probably tomorrow morning now, with cork, fill in all the gaps, all the edges where it's not quite me. That's quite a good one to do actually. But this one here is a little bit of a gap, so I'm just going to fill all those little gaps in and go around all the edges as well. So just a quick one, um, we actually found that the pink grip was a lot better than the grip fill. Um, it just seemed to set faster, so you didn't have to hold it for as long. Um, this one moved about a little bit, so it's still good, but we preferred this one. For this whole wall, um, we used about, probably just one of these. I think there was about half left in this and so about half left in this now. So we used just one of those for the whole wall. So it's the next morning. 
this is completely set now i've just checked over it nothing's moved thank god <laughs> we've got no slippage it's all looking fab still the next step which i'm going to do now is i'm going to go around and i'm going to cork all of the edges any gaps going to add the cork all down each edge either side it's going to take me a while to do but it's so worth it So I just wanted to show you that because it's literally as easy as that but it makes such a difference. Obviously you can see here this is where I cork to and then you can see the gap here. So obviously when you paint over that you're going to have no gaps. You won't see any gaps at all. But it makes such a difference. It's going to take me a while to go around everywhere but honestly it's so worth it so don't miss this step. Okay that took me longer than I thought it was going to but we are done. As you can see, just all edges and gaps are filled. And it's looking a lot better. Right then, when I'm ready for the next step, which is to prime. So I'm using this wood primer. If it focuses. It's from... Oh, it's just focusing on Mimi instead. Here we are, we'll try that again. There we are. So it is a primer and undercoat for wood... Um, this was from B&Q and it was about £9 for this small tub. I might need a little bit more. I'm going to see how far I get with this bit that we've got left in this one. So this is the wall with one coat of wood primer on. I'm not sure whether to just put the paint straight on. I think I want to go for it. I'm just going to put the paint straight on. And if it does need another coat, I'll have to go over again with this paint. So next step is to paint over the whole wall. I'm hating the whole thing white again just to get rid of any marks so you can see just a little mark there. I'm just using matte paint which I got from being cute. So I'm just keeping the wall white um, but if you are using a colour on the wall I would just go over the panels again just because you can see there's still like a little bit of a wood colour that comes through. I'd go over them again in primer just to make sure that they're as white as possible before add a new colour to the wall but as I'm just keeping it white I'm just going to go ahead with this now. Don't forget your old sheets to protect your flooring and obviously give your paint a good mix before you start painting. Right then we are now finished let's have a look. This is the finished look. I think it looks amazing I'm really pleased with it. It's super easy to do as well, but it's so effective on the wall. I can't wait to get the bed in and just style it now. Absolutely love it. If you're thinking of trying it, definitely give it a go. It's so easy to just follow the steps in this video. Super easy to do. Um, we're not any experts or anything like that. Um, we just like to give things a go and yeah, it looks really good. Happy with it.
Right then we'll leave it there. Um, I really, really hope this has helped. Um, if you are thinking of giving this a go, go for it. Like it has made such a difference this wall. It just completely transforms a plain wall into something that looks really elegant and I just love it. I think it looks so nice. So we are not like, we just give everything a go. I mean, you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be like, a decorator or anything for this just just literally just give it a go like i think you'll surprise yourself it's it's really simple to follow really simple to do um but yeah it looks amazing so yeah if this has helped i really hope it has um don't forget if you are in on instagram to tag me in any photos if you do give it a go um i love seeing all of your photos on there thank you so much for watching and um, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if it helped or if you like the video and then hit that subscribe button as well thanks for watching bye